Welcome to We Are the Church, a daily moment of encouragement for all the saints of God, brought to you by the First United Methodist Church in Orange, California. Happy Thursday to you all. I hope this finds you well wherever you are in the world. Thanks for stopping in for this moment so we can kind of build each other up and be encouraged by the Word of God. Uh, today I'm going to be reading from chapter 5 of the Gospel of Luke in verses 33 to 35. Chapter 5, verse 33 and 35. Then they said to Jesus, John's disciples, like the disciples of the Pharisees, frequently fast and pray, but your disciples eat and drink. Jesus said to them, you cannot make the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them, can you? The days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. Jesus was known for having a joyful spirit as he was undertaking his ministry. Yes, there were times when he wept. There were times when he was filled with anxiety, particularly on the night that he was arrested. But for the most part, we see a, a band of disciples and followers who came with Jesus who really sensed the freedom that God was giving them. Freedom from uh, their sins as they were forgiven. And freedom from uh, being uh, outcast or, or set aside by the rest of their culture. So much of our faith in this world is a matter of timing for us, isn't it? The Pharisees and uh, some of John's disciples had decided that it was time to be fasting. It was time to be praying. And so um, they expected everyone else to be just like them. But Jesus was saying, no, I am the one that they've been waiting for. And I'm the bridegroom. So why should those who are at the, at the wedding uh, be... Uh, fasting and, and acting sorrowful or repentant, this is the time for the joy. The Greek uh, language in which our New Testament was written had two words for time. The first word was chronos. It's the kind of time that we use, uh, that we refer to when we are using a watch or a calendar. Um, you know, it's the time of it's the kind of time that involves time cards and deadlines and being at meetings on time. It's the unfolding of the days and the hours and the years before us. That's chronos. But the Greeks also had a word called kairos. And kairos is a kind of expression of time that means this is the right moment. It's the moment that is pregnant with possibilities. It's as, this is the hour. This is the time. This is when we have to go. Like when you're standing on the top of a diving board and looking, you know, 10 feet down into the water and you're not sure whether you should jump or not. Then somebody behind you says, come on, let's go. And it's a Kairos moment and you leap off and into the safety of the water, hopefully. So life is filled with uh, Kairos moments as we are measuring out the Kronos. The Kairos moment comes along. And Jesus was saying to the disciples who came to criticize, or to those Pharisees who came to criticize he and his disciples, this is a Kairos moment. This is the beginning of the kingdom of God. This is the time when God has found favor with his people and is going to be setting them free from their oppression, setting them free from their sins, setting them free to live the life that God wants for them. It's a Kairos moment and they should celebrate referring to his own uh, death and resurrection and departure later on. He said, there will be a time when even my disciples are needing to fast and pray so that they can be centered in the spirit. And you and I are living in such an age right now. Yes, it's appropriate at times to be fasting and praying, but it's also appropriate uh, to celebrate when the bridegroom is with us. And this is part of the reason like that even during the season of Lent, this 40 days of, of having a penitential and inward reflecting attitude, we set aside every Sunday uh, to, to be a special day, a day of celebrating the resurrection of Christ. Sundays are not Lent days during this season of Lent. They don't count in the, as part of the 40 days. It's a Kairos moment for the church 
even the church that has been fasting and praying, to sit up, remember that Jesus had said, I am with you always to the end of the age, and to celebrate in that Kairos moment we call worship, the presence of God with us. Just some thoughts to think about on this Thursday in the second week of Lent. Let's be in prayer. God, we thank you that our life is not simply measured by birthdays and anniversaries and by the, the year that we see written on our calendars. We thank you that in the midst of all of those milestones, O oh Lord, there, are, there arises in our life from time to time a Kairos moment. This is the moment to ask for someone's hand in marriage. This is the moment to leave one job and take up another. This is the moment to answer your call for what we should do in our life. Oh Lord, we thank you for the Kairos moments in our life. And we ask that you would help us by the strength of your Holy Spirit to always respond in faith when you call to us in the Kairos moment. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you, friends, for being with us today. I hope that today or sometime this week, you really do have a Kairos moment. And as you're going about your work today, remember to do no harm, to do all the good you can, and to stay in love with God. And until next time, I'm Pastor Bill Johnson of the First United Methodist Church in Orange, reminding you, you can find We Are The Church every Monday through Saturday, right here on the YouTube channel for this congregation. See you soon.